Okay, in the last lecture, we have discussed the monostable multi vibrator implementation using triple phi timer. We have derived the expression for the time interval of monostable multi vibrator. There are a lot of applications of uh, this triple phi timer operates in monostable multi vibrator mode. Today, we will discuss some of the applications of this. Uh, triple phi timer based monostable multi vibrator. MS MV stands for monostable multi vibrator is pulse width modulation. So, in communication uh, systems, this pulse width modulation plays an important role. Even in case of power electronics also, so in order to drive the power electronic circuits, we will use uh, pulse width modulation. Pulse width modulation is having lot of applications. So, before going for the triple phi timer based pulse width modulation, I will explain uh, what is pulse width modulation. So, in uh, pulse modulation systems, there will be one modulating signal and one carrier. For that matter, in any modulation, there are two signals, one is called modulating signal. another is carrier. So, after combining this the resultant signal is called modulated signal. So, normally carrier is high frequency signal when compared with the modulating signal. So, that this can propagate over the long distances. As the name implies this carrier is going to carry the modulating signal which is nothing but the information signal. Actual information is present in this modulating signal, but because this modulating signal is low frequency signal, it cannot propagate over the long distances. So, that is why we are going to use a carrier signal which is high frequency signal which carries the modulating or information signal. So, that uh, after the modulation the resultant frequency becomes high and that high uh, frequency signal can propagate over the long distances. That signal is called modulated signal. This is combination of both modulating signal or information signal plus carrier. So, in case of uh, the continuous time modulation techniques, carrier is a high frequency sine wave and this is modulating signal is low frequency signal. If we combine these two, in case of amplitude uh, modulation, this type of modulated signal you will get. Actual information is present in this envelope. This is the actual information signal, but this is low frequency signal, whereas this carrier is high frequency. So, both combined this is called modulated signal, this is amplitude modulated signal in fact. FM is the maximum frequency. This is the frequency spectrum of modulating signal. If carrier frequency is Fc which is much much greater than Fm, then after modulation what happens is you will get Fm plus Fc, Fm minus Fc. This modulated signal will be having two frequencies such as 
एफ एम प्लस एफ सी एफ एम माइनस एफ सी तो इस इज ओवरऑल लार्ज फ्रीक्वेंसी वी कैन सेंड दिस ओवर दी लॉन्ग डिस्टेंसेस दैट इज द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द मॉडुलेशन दिस इज द केस ऑफ कंटिन्यूस टेम मॉडुलेशन इन केस ऑफ पल्स मॉडुलेशन दिस कैरियर इज ए स्क्वेर ऑफ सिग्नल मॉडुलेटिंग सिग्नल इज दिस कंटिन्यूस टेम सिग्नल This is also called information signal. The chaz audio or video signal. If it is audio signal, the frequency range is twenty to twenty kilohertz. And the carrier is square wave. This is of high frequency. You can see that the time period here is less than the time period of modulating signal. If this is the time period, one period of this modulating signal. Of course, this need not be a periodic signal. I am just giving the example. Then this period is much much less than the period of this one. Means the frequency is much much greater than because time period and frequency are Having reciprocal relation, so time period is less means frequency is more. Now this is carrier signal. It can be unipolar or bipolar. Now we are going to send a modulated signal. There are many ways to obtain the modulated signal. Either you can change the amplitude of the carrier in accordance with the modulating signal, that is called as pulse amplitude modulation (PAM), or you can change the width of the carrier with respect to the modulating signal, which is called as PWM. Here we are interested in uh, PWM because we can generate this PWM using a uh, triple five timer. Okay. So here, if I consider pulse width modulated signal, is if I consider this as zero input, this as zero input, and this is the maximum input, say F max, and this is minus F max. So in the modulated signal, what happens is at zero, it has some reference width. Say this is the width corresponding to zero amplitude. Now, if I take different sampling periods, we are going to sample this continuous time signal according to the sampling theorem. So these are the sampling instants. Now here this magnitude is greater than zero magnitude. So here the width of the signal is greater than that of this signal. This signal is having smaller width. Now this width is more because this amplitude is greater than this. Now here still it is greater than this. So here this will be again further greater than this. And here, this is same as the previous one. This. Here, this is zero again. So we'll get this width. Here, in the negative, the width becomes very less. So like that. The width of this carrier signal. This, if you take a reference at a zero modulating signal 
value this is the width then if modulated is having larger magnitudes then larger width lower magnitudes lower widths like that this width of this signal will be varied this is what is called the pulse width modulated signal we can generate this type of pulse width modulated signal using triple phi timer PWM using triple phi timer. So, this circuit diagram of this one is if I take the triple phi timer as a block diagram, we know the internal circuitry of this triple phi timer. These are the different pins. This is VCC. This is ground. This is R A, this is C. This is the point where trigger is applied. This is the point where output is taken. Here at this point 5 we are going to apply the modulating signal. So that at the output we will get PWM signal. Now what is the operation? is as I have discussed in the earlier lecture also here this voltage is two third VCC if I want to change this time interval we can apply the control signal also this pulse width this is initially in uh, standby mode 0 if I apply negative going uh, trigger at the second pin it will become positive how long this will be positive this will be decided by this two third VCC and one third VCC. Okay. Now, if we want to control this pulse width using the control signal, what I am going to do is I am going to apply some control signal here. This is modulating signal. Here I am going to apply at this pin number 5, which is called control voltage modulating signal. Now what will be this resultant threshold this becomes previously it was two third VCC plus V modulating signal magnitude is Vm. This is variable actually we can call this as a Vm of T also in fact. So when does this comes to this uh, standby mode again? So, this time period T will be decided by 1.1 times RA into C without using this control signal. Now, if I use the control voltage, this relation no longer is valid. Now, what will be the expression for T if I apply the control voltage? is if I apply the control voltage here this is going to modulate the threshold voltage which is modulating signal modulates threshold voltage. How this will modulate is the operation of this monostable multi vibrator is we have connected between this 6 and ground there is a capacitor. If you consider this circuit also in a pulse width modulated circuit between 6 and this is 6 and 7 between 6 and the ground there is a capacitor. So, initially if you apply the negative going trigger 
this output becomes high that is initially in standby mode 0 then this becomes high this will be high until the capacitor charges to two third VCC if you do not have the control signal. If the capacitor charges to two third VCC from 0 then it will goes to the low state this is the output in case of control voltage is 0. Now, if control voltage is Vm of t because we are here we are going to apply say Vm of t which is modulating signal. Then when does it comes to this uh, 0? So, this output was initially in standby mode low and whenever the trigger pulse voltage is slightly less than one third Vcc it will go to high state ok. So, that the capacitor will charges. Now, whenever it charges to a value which is equal to two third Vcc plus Vm of t then only this will comes to the low state because uh, this voltage was two third Vcc plus Vm of t. So, if the voltage at this six terminal where the capacitor is connected if it is slightly greater than two third Vcc plus Vm of t then non inverting terminal will be having more voltage than the inverting terminal output becomes R is equal to 1 so that the flip flap becomes reset. So, this Q or this output will becomes 0. See now to make this output is equal to 0 the voltage at this terminal 6 or terminal 7 both are grounded here both are shorted here this is nothing but voltage across the capacitor with respect to this ground. If this voltage is slightly greater than two third Vcc plus Vm of t then this will goes to the this one. So, now this pulse width will be decided by not only two third Vcc but also Vm of t. If I want to derive the expression for this pulse width if I call this pulse width as w. So, we know that the voltage across the capacitor is given by V c of t is equal to the final voltage to which it has to charge is V c c. This capacitor has to finally, charges through this R a to this V c c, but whenever it charges to this the output becomes low. So, V c c into 1 minus e to the power of minus t by R c. R a into C because this is R a, R a into C. But what is the condition if I start this with 0 and this is W at T is equal to W. What is the voltage across the capacitor? Because this comes to the 0 state this will be 2 third Vcc plus Vm of T. So, if I substitute this 2 third Vm of T is 2 third Vcc plus Vm of T is equal to Vcc into 1 minus e to the power of this T becomes W. So, if I divide with uh, Vcc implies 1 minus e to the power of minus w by r c is equal to this v c c this v c c will get cancelled 2 by 3 plus v m of t by v c c or what is e to the power of minus w by r c if I take this to this side and this times to this side is equal to 1 minus 2 by 3 minus v m by t by Vcc. This is equal to 1 by 3 minus Vm of t by Vcc. Therefore, what is minus W by Rc? 
this is equal to logarithm of 1 by 3 minus Vm of T by Vcc. If I take LCM here, thrice Vcc, Vcc minus 3 times Vm of T. W is equal to minus Rc times this logarithm of this or if I take this minus sign inside then this will reverse. So, implies what is the expression for W is equal to Rc times logarithm of 3 Vcc divided by Vcc minus thrice Vm of T. That is the pulse width is going to vary with Vm of t. So, as a result of that this input output waveforms if I draw here, if this is the trigger input, This is the trigger input applied at pin number 2. These are the points where the output will change negative going pulse. Whenever this amplitude is less than one third of the VCC, output will change. So, the modulating signal is something like this. is modulating signal. This is applied at pin number 5 which is the control voltage. Pin number 5 which is nothing but the control voltage. Then what will be the output? At pin number 3 So, initially in standby mode this was low and in the negative clock cycle is applied whose amplitude is uh, slightly less than one third is VCC this will go to the high and how long this will remain high this will be decided by as I have told this is two third VCC plus Vm of T. This is your Vm of T. So, here the magnitude is somewhat lower value so this width is slightly lower one. Then at the second clock signal is two third VCC plus this value. So, this is greater than this value. So, the width here will be more than this. And at this point the width is slightly less than this but greater than this. Now, this value is in between this and this. Whereas at this point, this is negative, so width is less than this value. This is the peak negative value, so we width will be minimum. And this is somewhat more than this value. This will be somewhat greater than this width. So, you see nothing but pulse width modulated signal. This is PM stands for pulse width. This is how you can generate this pulse width modulation using triple phi timer. This is one of the important application of this triple phi timer. 
So we have some more applications that we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.